So uh, I will tell you about how we moved our onboardings to the server and what it gave us. And uh, if you want to speak to me about some other topics, we can speak about low code applications, robotic process automation, help authoring, localization, and of, of course, mobile applications. So a couple of numbers to give you, um, maybe to show off, and uh, maybe to give you some context why our onboardings are so big and uh, why we need to put them to the server. So we have uh, Mao that is more than 60 million. Uh, our installs is uh, roughly 32 million in half a year. And uh, our onboarding generates 40% of our revenue, which is quite a big number uh, in, in percents. Uh, our traffic is 60% organic and LTV is more than customer acquisition cost uh, by six times. And uh, uh, we also have a lot of free users and uh, basically a majority of them are in Africa and uh, some of them are in Asia and we have separate onboardings for them too. And uh, our application is not for men, women anymore. So you can install it, share with your partner and improve your life. So I encourage you to do that. Yeah, <laughs> it was number one feature that was requested from us. And uh, finally, we did it. OK, so about the agenda, I will tell you how we migrated um, our importance to the server. Also, challenges that we have and uh, how many experiments can be effectively run. And maybe uh, in questions you can uh, show your numbers, because our is not very big, I guess. And uh, no code onboarding creation tools and techniques. So let's start from the problems, because we're well, product managers. Uh, what problems did we have? Um, our releases and fixes dep uh, were dependent on the um, uh, actually stores. Yeah? Uh, it can be uh, two days, three days, but uh, our new, uh, new app version usually is released within two weeks. So time to detect an error in experiment was more than one day. iOS and Android engineers were doing onboardings, but um, we believe that uh, it can be done by any person that has sense of, I don't know, that has high education, maybe, or even that doesn't have. Uh, and cognitive complexity was very big, as you see in the screenshot. So this one, all these steps, it's only one part, maybe one eighth of the English iOS onboarding. So our onboardings are very big. And uh, why are they very big? We have super app. We have a lot of use cases. That's why we need to cover them all. Actually, uh, here you can see our goal selection screen. We experiment on it a lot, but you can see that basically we have eight very big use cases and each of them can be divided into other sub-use cases. And uh, the structure of onboardings is quite, I would say, uh, unique. And uh, in your application, you can have uh, different, different um, onboarding structure. So we divide it by platform. So Android and iOS onboardings, they're different uh, by locale. Uh, and we experiment mostly on English, but uh, we also want to experiment on top five languages, at least, and uh, in future, maybe uh, on all languages at once. Uh, then we have application onboarding, which is the biggest one, a web to application, uh, when user buy, buys uh, the product uh, on web and then is uh, redirected to the application goal switching. And uh, scale is up to 400 screens or even more, and with a lot of branches. And uh, web onboarding web, uh, is just historically, it's the most popular hashtag today. Uh, web is kind of a separate product. Uh, you cannot do anything uh, but only pay there. Yeah, uh, But it's very big, um, big source of um, traffic. And it's, uh, it's smaller by scale, but I guess in a, a year or two, it will be uh, the same size uh, onboarding as we have for the application. So the first question was to buy something or to build. And uh, it was very interesting use case when CEO Leonid Yuryev, um, he approached us 
not us, but uh, on LinkedIn, used our name to have a lot of hype. To be, uh, and actually, their product is quite nice. It's called Onboarding Online. And uh, of course, you cannot build uh, Flow Onboarding in 15 minutes, but he pitched this product to us. And uh, maybe three years ago, we would have bought it. But uh, right now, there are a lot of things that um, were not compliant with our requirements, especially not all pl platforms. <coughs> Integration costs would be very big. And we need to onboard a new uh, vendor, which is quite painful. But if you are if you are not very big, if you only start your uh, journey as a mobile application, it's very good variant. Also, you, you can use Pando, Chameleon, and other services. So we decided to use in-house solution to build it, actually, uh, because we need a lot of customization. And our paywall builder and analytics tool, the A-B testing system, um, was already built in-house. And uh, all these um, services... They offer you paywall builders, they offer you A-B tests, and um, it will be no value for us in that case. So what you need to do to um, uh, prepare for the um, onboarding on the server? You need to have this uh, structure, like array of steps and transitions, and uh, transitions can have conditions. That's all, actually. Technically, it's very simple, um, but not very uh, as I can show you on the next slides. So uh, what we did, uh, we hide, uh, we've hidden the um, complexity of onboardings uh, in the sub-surveys. So you can uh, expand or collapse them, and you can edit them uh, in parallel. Yeah. And uh, we added experiment surveys, this one and this one, and we also store them separately. We can connect them, we can disconnect them, and as you know, nine of ten experiments, uh, they fail. That's why it's very easy to delete one. And our new workflow, uh, so our uh, main user was a release manager or product manager who creates uh, onboardings without code or practically without code in our CMS, which is contentful. You can use any CMS you, you want. We use Phrase as a translation management system, and uh, we are still creating our experiments uh, in our unified experiment service. And uh, when you're done, you just uh, publish, click Publish in Contentful, and your surveys or onboardings, they are available on Amazon S3. And the next part, when everything is ready, uh, our application starts and uh, sends a request to our survey engine service and uh, we pick onboarding that suits you and just serve it. And all the media, so images, videos, they have been downloaded in the background. And we, we also had several options. So the first one uh, was to download onboarding at once. So we uh, store uh, history only on client side Assets uh, are downloaded in background, and infrastructure cost is $100 a month. So um, as a product manager, even, even if you're not a technical product manager, you need to uh, ask your team about future costs. Yeah? Because if you implement um, some kind of chatbot me mechanic, it can cost you up to 20000 a month. Because uh, all this... Um, so, so your server will, be, will have high load, and you need to store the history on server. So uh, the cost can be up to 20,000 a month on scale of flow. And uh, we're also considering right now the hybrid system. So when we know that track is the most popular segment and uh, we just pre-download pre this flow and uh, we download partner mode, pregnancy or trying to conceive users only on demand. So it's up to you, but there are a lot of options uh, and you need to consider them. And uh, how we did it. It's not a gold recipe, it's not silver bullet. Uh, it's just how we did it, but you can do practically the same way. Uh, so our onboarding is downloaded on application start. So we have this nice animation and a lot of things are uh, going in background. You can experiment with this animation and uh, our numbers show that... Uh, Two-second animation 
is enough you, you, and the majority of the uh, onboardings will be downloaded in two seconds. If you have eight seconds, it will not increase your numbers uh, drastically. But uh, maybe on your users, in your locations, uh, numbers will be different. And in, co in case of no response, uh, when user is offline, we are using embedded or offline onboarding. So you need to have a pipeline to include your uh, server onboarding into the application once a sprint. And of course, you need uh, analytics event to track the um, percentage of remote and local onboardings. So this is a real dashboard uh, for some region. And as you can see, it's like 95%, but uh, regularly, if uh, the general numbers is that from 5 to 10% of your users will be offline. So you need to track on them. And actually, they convert practically uh, the same. So they do not. Uh, so the conversion is, let's say, if we have 10% conversion for online users, for offline users, it will be 9. So you shouldn't forget about them. And um, some interesting details that maybe you will not think about. Uh, the user is not created at once. We are creating users only if we have year of birth and user goal. It's our application specific, regulations, all this stuff. Uh, and after user is created, um, then we can check for some user attributes to provide her or now him uh, and maybe them uh, tailored onboarding. Uh, and uh, you cannot provide tailor, tailor onboarding just uh, from the start because you don't have all the attributes, you need to wait for them. So you can experiment with this and it's really a tough question, but uh, um, you can improve your onboarding drastically. And then a lot of screens and at the end, maybe at the end you have some paywalls. Paywalls also, I guess, will be, will be using user attributes and authentication step and finish. And also you need to think about autosave and return journey. So will you autosave uh, on each step or will you, um, if user uh, just um, uh, kills the application, closes it, or uh, will it be not autosave and uh, you will do it, uh, you will uh, always maybe route user to this step. So we have uh, different mechanics on Android and iOS, but um, the best mechanic that we discovered is to show some kind of a feature card, hello, Welcome back and uh, go in history to the latest step that was um, actually um, uh, fulfilled. Okay, enablers. Uh, enabler is a new cool experience, it's like you tap and it, uh, it uh, has taptic effect. Uh, this uh, actually, this step uh, raised our conversions by 5%, but um, this enabler all, all only worked, uh, let's say, at version 10, yeah? But uh, all, other, uh, all other versions didn't have it. That's why you need uh, to include it only in experiments with the um, latest application version. And uh, when experiment wins, in this case it wins, uh, so it won, uh, we merged it in our baseline, which is the main onboarding, and we increased, it increased its minimal version. So you can have uh, a question right now, uh, how many old client versions should we support? So uh, the answer is um, latest, of course, and uh, latest minus one. Because uh, here on iOS, you can see that here's our new release and uh, new users practically in an hour get the new version. And the tail of old version, it's kind of around 10% and it lasts one week. In Android, we have gradual rollout. That's why the new version is, is being rolled out gradually. It takes uh, practically one week and we have the same tail. So if you support two, um, two versions, uh, latest and latest minus one, it will be enough. Okay, and uh, we also built a contentful, custom contentful application. Uh, we called it Survey Graph, which has a lot of features, and uh, it's better to show you a video because. Yeah. So Contentful is a CMS, headless CMS, but it allows you to create custom interfaces, and we created one to show graphically how your onboarding looks like. Because uh, in a table view, it makes no sense, and it has a lot of capabilities, so. 
we used React Flow application to display everything, and it works nicely. And uh, actually, Contentful itself uses React Flow to display the um, uh, content model. And here, uh, this is an experiment merge preview. And it shows you how your experiment, which is uh, stored separately, how it's actually, it fits into the baseline. See, it has different animations, so you can see what the final uh, end user will get. But uh, when this, um, and here is a sub-survey, which hides a lot of uh, steps inside of it. So here's how we uh, tackle the um, cognitive complexity. And there are also bulk actions, tagging, deleting, so it's not very useful for you. And uh, the next level is step editor. So you need to provide, if you want to go really codeless, you need to provide an interface how to uh, build these steps. We used Contentful uh, Live Preview feature for that, and uh, we customized it a lot, and we'll invest in it more. And uh, sometimes you can have situations like here, uh, it was a pregnancy week use case. It has 35 steps, but actually it shows you the pregnancy week and the uh, notification permissions for different versions of Android. So to avoid this, you need to support some kind of template in language and placeholders. So maybe some kind of this syntax. So uh, all these switch cases, when you just need to display a number or a username like here, uh, it's better to have some kind of templates and not to uh, do it in, on the visual editor, uh, on the graph editor. And you need to test your onboardings, of course, uh, because uh, we want not QAs, but uh, live ops people uh, to do the testing. So beforehand, um, our QAs tested custom builds and uh, it wasn't very good approach. Next level was uh, edit requests response and proxy program. It was also kind of painful. And then we created a separate debug menu. Uh, this is example on Android. Like here, you just copy paste the name of your survey or onboarding uh, from Contentful. You can also uh, have experiment name, group, start step even. So it's teleport feature and you can save a lot of nerves and a lot of time uh, while testing, because our onboardings are very big, and you can start from step number 100. And here it is, pro-social, something, and you're done. So this was uh, our first improvement. And uh, the next one was uh, providing a deep link uh, right inside, inside our application and generate deep link uh, with the QR code. So right now testing looks like this, and it can be done by any person who has latest uh, debug build. You just have the QR code of a specific step or uh, onboarding, you just scan it and here you are. You have uh, the status, so yeah, it's been downloaded. Uh, you just need to, yeah, and uh, here is the step. So uh, now our localization managers can test, anyone can test, so it's very crucial for time to market. And uh, this is our North Star. We are not here yet, but it's a working prototype. We want uh, to test everything just in browser. So without the need of the mobile uh, phone yeah, uh, for testing. As you see, you just go through onboarding and uh, the progress is displayed here. Uh, so yeah, this is maybe in a year I will tell you how it went. And we have a special team, and uh, Katya is sitting here. <laughs> it's her team, yeah. Uh, they were very, uh, they were our, I, I wanted to say guinea pigs, but okay, our first customers, uh, which we provided the server onboarding. And at first, uh, it went not very smoothly, because uh, if any error, they just blamed us. It's you. Uh, they, they kept updating the mirror with the, all the schemes, and uh, they were waiting for some reason for the mobile release to start the experiment. But uh, if you have server onboarding, you don't need to wait. And, uh, but I just analyzed uh, yesterday maybe uh, what we have right now. So uh, QAs and live ops people, they find root causes uh, in the majority of cases without even developers. Team uses a screenshot from our graph app and uh, links to in, in their communications in the Slack channel. 
and it's very uh, i would say it's very illustrative and everyone is in the context and we are contacted only if there is uh, really a bug or some kind of issue or feature request and we have all the inputs needed so we uh, uh, i think we are now we accepted it yeah everyone accepted and uh, just a couple of examples what we can fix in online why do we need it uh, who can tell me what's what's wrong with this uh, Animation. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Uh, this one had, I guess, localization typo, something like that, or just didn't have localization. So we can just uh, localize it and uh, put it to the server in a couple of clicks. Uh, basically, we just wait here for translators. And uh, this one, we have a special view where we can detect experiment clashes. So here, uh, this is a red experiment and green experiment, and this one uh, in gray it's baseline. And uh, when two experiments start from the same point, uh, they can uh, they can be um, the behavior can be uh, not defined actually, and priority will be uh, maybe lost. So uh, we can detect it and show an alert. And uh, you need observability, of course. So we have a special dashboard with alerts. Uh, which shows the status of each onboarding and here are the experiments and the, the coolest feature here i would say it's uh, real user traffic uh, in real time so it's it has maybe a uh, up to a minute delay but it's very useful when you start a new experiment and you you can watch 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 it and then oops somebody uh, tried to publish uh, not valid onboarding but uh, no problem it's only a warning we, we cannot pass it, we have all the validations. And these are the um, experiments that are being, might have been affected, actually. And uh, we punished this person, and after 30, 45 minutes, everything is back to green. You can see this publish uh, fixed everything. So you're good to go. And how many experiments can be run, run in parallel? Maybe 42. Uh, today I checked, it was 26. And uh, actually, the uh, uh, the answer is simple: as many as you can handle. So we can we can have 100, we can have 200, but uh, it's all about your capacity, capacity of the product designer, product manager, and especially analyst. Because if you have a lot of a lot of experiments, they can influence each other, and uh, yeah, it's it's hard to analyze them if they're really complicated. So, but 26 is okay. And was it worse to migrate to the server? Uh, I would say yes. Uh, and uh, yeah, why? Why yes? Because now we can release fixes and experiments in minutes. So five minutes, fifteen minutes is a real numbers. And our target users are not engineers anymore. So our target users are release managers uh, or live ops, and also product managers. Uh, but it needs some training, yeah, maybe a week, I would say. Um, time to detect an experiment, uh, it's like 15 minutes. As long as, as you can see traffic on that uh, dashboard that I've shown you, you can see that, okay, my test group, control group, they have some traffic because analytics systems, uh, they have, they're not real time. And maybe you can uh, wait for three hours, maybe for a day to have some uh, clue on what's going on in your experiment. And... Uh, Previously, QA tested debug builds. It was where you need to be a tech person. And now even localization managers who and the local, uh, translators, they can just uh, scan QR code and uh, test and do the localization testing. And uh, that's it. Yeah, we have ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs>